While on the subject discussed in last video about including header files into your .cpp source files, let's learn about an interesting subject known as inclusion guards. And here's what it's all about. Let's imagine that for our project, we need to have a class like this one called player. And of course, we created the header file over here where we declared the whole player class, which at this point looks very minimal just for demonstration. And then we have the player.cpp file where we have the implementation of the player class, which includes, of course, the header file. And then we want to go ahead in our main function over here and make use of this class. So we all know already that we need to include the player.h file and then we can go ahead and start instantiating objects of the player class. So far so good. Now let's further imagine that in this same project we also have a different class like this one over here, game. We have the game header file, we have the game source file, and at some point we decided that in this game class we want it to have as a member variable a instance of the player class because for whatever reason it makes sense in our project that a game contains it has a player so of course what we'd have to do is to go ahead and include over here the player header file and now we can again go ahead and begin making use of the player class as you see right over here we created a private member variable of the class player which we called my player so now every time you create an instance of the game class you will know that it contains inside of it an instance of the player class so again we have this other class over here called game we have its header file we have its cpp file and the game class contains a player now back in the main function we decided that we want to make use of the game class. So we merrily go ahead and include the game header file. And once we're done with that, we can proceed to start creating instances of the game class, like this one over here, which we call new game. Well, everything seems to be fine and it doesn't look like there's any problem over here. But actually, if you think about it, and especially if you try to run this little program over here you will get a compiler error and your program will not work and here's the reason why to recap we want to use player so we included the player header file and then we started using player then we also want to use game so we included the game file the game.h header file and then we started making use of game the interesting twist happens because of the fact that game.h itself also includes player.h, the same file that we have already included in this file over here where we have our main function. And that can mean trouble for the following reason. As you remember, these commands over here, the ones that begin with the pound, the hash symbol, are not really exactly C++, they are instructions to the preprocessor to do some important stuff before the compiler begins compiling the code. Now, it could be that you thought that what include means is that we're telling the compiler to go to this other file and compile it and then come back and continue, continue compiling the rest of this file. No, that's not what happens. What include does is actually very simply it just goes to the file copies the entire contents and pastes it right there where you asked the preprocessor to include that file so what the preprocessor is going to do is it's going to delete this line over here that you type to include and instead it's going to paste right then and there the entire contents of the file that you asked to be included so it takes the whole declaration of this player class over here and it pastes it right there in your CPP file that you're compiling over here where you ask the preprocessor to include 
player.h. So let's continue playing out what's going to happen over here during preprocessing. When the preprocessor reaches here, it's going to delete this line and it's going to copy all the contents of game.h and it's going to paste it right then and there where you asked it to be included. Then it's going to go ahead and read this line over here, which we just pasted. Hmm, include player.h. Okay, it goes over to the player.h file, copies all of its contents, and pastes it right there where the include command existed right before. Now we could already see the, pr the problem that arises because of this. Because we included player.h, and we included game.h, which also included player.h, at the end of the day, our CPP file will end up with two declarations of the player class. It'll end up with twice the entire contents of the player.h file. And that, of course, is a huge problem, because we cannot have in C++ two things which have the same declaration but the same name. Just as you know, we can't create a variable int x and then a little bit later on create something else again which is called x. You cannot compile this code because it will produce a compiler error that you are re-declaring the same item x twice. And that's exactly what happened over here on top when we included player.h and then we included also game.h which in itself also included player.h resulting in having the class player declared twice. And this is a problem that is oftentimes hard to detect. Even right over here in this simple example, it's not immediately evident that there's any problem over here. I'm just including player.h and then I'm including game.h, so everything seems to be fine. It's not immediately evident that game.h inside of it also includes player.h. You have to go hunting a little bit inside of the header files to realize if there's any problem like this. And this is only a very simple example. In more complex, bigger projects that you might be working on, you might possibly be including tens, maybe even hundreds of header files, each of which in turn might also be including many, many other header files. And perhaps somewhere along the way, there can be some header file somewhere along the way which has been declared, it's been included twice, resulting in compiler errors. And the solution to this problem is what we call inclusion guards. And they are exactly what they sound like. They guard against including too many times a particular header file. And here's how it works. Let's go over here to the player.h header file. Now, in this header file, and in fact in all of your header files from this point onward, if you want to have the protection of inclusion guards, here is what you will need to type at the very beginning and at the very end of each of your header files. This is a preprocessor instruction, so of course it begins with the number symbol, but instead of using the word include, we have a different command now, and here is how it goes. If n def. If we divide this up into English words, it would be if not defined. You will understand in another minute exactly what this means. So for now, let's just type if n def. And then we will type a unique label for this particular file. Programmers usually like to type over here in all uppercase something that looks like the name of this file. So maybe in our case we would type something like player underscore h, which kind of looks like the name of the file player.h. So if in def player underscore h, we are telling the preprocessor, if you have never yet heard of something called player underscore h. So the preprocessor might say, nope, never heard of it. Well, in that case, we have another preprocessor command for it to do if it did not hear about, if it's not defined, this label over here, player underscore h. In that case, the preprocessor 
should do the following define player underscore h we are telling the preprocessor if you've never heard of player underscore h then I will tell you now that player underscore h is as follows and then comes all the rest of the header file everything that you are declaring your class declarations and everything else that you have in your header file and then all the way at the end to wrap up your command your inclusion guard you will type end if this is like a sort of closing brace which closes off what we typed in the beginning if and def so again we tell the preprocessor if you've never yet heard of something called player underscore h then you should know for the first time now about player underscore h and it goes all like this everything that you typed up in your header file signing off with the end if command and after we type this this header file is now safe it is guarded from accidentally including it twice when you compile your program because here's what's going to happen let's say right now the compiler is compiling this file over here and it reaches over here to this line include player.h okay so the compiler goes over there and it's going to copy all the stuff in that file and paste it right over here then it's going to start reading the stuff that it pasted in and it's going to see if in def player underscore h hmm let's see was player underscore h ever defined was it def uh, nope so far I have never yet heard of something called player underscore h well in that case we will execute this line of code define player underscore h right now we are declaring for the first time player underscore h and here is what it means everything that is in your header file that you are declaring and it all ends over here by the end with the end if so we've included the player class the player.h file once now let's continue the preprocessor goes to the next line Oh, include game.h. So we go to the game.h header file and the preprocessor copies all the text and pastes it right here. And then it's going to read the stuff that it just pasted in. Let's see, include player.h. It's going to go ahead and try to include player.h. And now it's going to execute the stuff in that header file player.h. Let's see, if in def player underscore h. Have I ever heard of player underscore h? Actually, yes, I have. At this point, the preprocessor already defined player underscore h, in which case it's going to skip everything over here, totally ignoring it, not pasting in the code up until the end if command. And so what ends up happening is that over here instead of player.h getting pasted several times because it's been included several times instead it only gets pasted in one time and it will never ever again be pasted in because every time someone might include player.h again the preprocessor will meet up with this command over here which is going to stop it from including it again because player underscore h has already been created it's already been defined the very first time player underscore h wasn't defined yet and so we did include it but any subsequent time that we might include player dot h it's going to be entirely skipped because player underscore h was already defined during this compilation as a matter of fact if you go into this file over here string and any other of the standard header files like IO stream and all the other ones we were using let's open up string over here you can see at the very top that they typed into their inclusion guards like you see right over here if and def underscore string underscore that's the way they decided they want to label this particular file then define string and then comes the whole entire header file all the way down till the end where the end if command closes off the inclusion guard so as you can see it is highly recommended that anytime you create a header file you should definitely create inclusion guards along with it